Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Beckham's Cot Model Village today. We've come here to do the Miniature Railway Britain one year on update. So here is the Beckham's Cot Light Railway and over there is Beckham's Cot Model Village. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and have a ride. Um, we have already featured it here. It's had its official Miniature Railway Britain episode. But what we're going to do, we're just going to have a ride and um, I'm going to talk a bit about what's happened during the first year. Have a look at their tram. I really like that vehicle. So um, we go up here can already hear the diesel locomotive waiting so we we'll jump on the train we'll go for a ride around so this video isn't so much to show you the railway although um, like I said we'll have a look at the link on screen now that video shows you the railway when I came here last September so I'm gonna go for a ride and then afterwards we'll go for a walk around the village so um, I'll show you what has changed since I last came here so we'll jump on the train the, um, the signal's down and um, we can go. So I've just boarded the train on the Beckenscott Light Railway. So it was a year ago I came up with this project. I said I'm going to visit every miniature railway in the British Isles. Now I envisaged there being about 200. Every list you look at doesn't seem to have all of them so I had to compile my own list and I've got about 240 odd miniature railways to visit so I've realised I've taken on a much 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 bigger task than I ever thought but you know I've not set a time limit so I'm going to carry on I will get to all those railways unless they close because um, unfortunately one or two have but then there's a, a, since I came up with the project there's been a few new ones open so you know I will keep keep going try every weekend to get to a miniature railway um, I haven't visited as many as I perhaps thought I would have because of the one big thing that's dominated everyone's lives recently is the whole coronavirus pandemic. Now, anyone watching, you know, if you have lost someone due to coronavirus, my thoughts go out to you. You know, I can only imagine, you know, it's, it's been a real awful time. But, you know, as things get better, attractions are open, we can come to these railways again and, um, you know, really start to enjoy them. So Beck and Scott's reopened. You'll have seen some of the other pre-COVID ones I've been to, such as Vanstone Park, um, where else have we been? We went to Highley, we went to Hanforth. So, you know, things are really getting back to normal and um, it's great we can enjoy miniature railways again. So, come here today to Beckenscott. It's one of my favourite. I think this, as I said, we have already been here. It's had its official episode. I think it was number five. Um, what I'll do, when we've had our train ride, though, I'll go for a little walk around the village because the great thing about Beckenscott is the village itself. It's always changing, there's always new buildings, so I'll take you for a walk around the village, I'll show you what's changed since we last visited last September, and um, you know, because it, it develops, it, it alters, it, it is always something new. Every time you come to Beckenscott, it's always a bit different. So if you come, you know, two or three times a year, your visit will never ever be the same. I'll just show you this bit here is where we started, the Beckenscott thing. I love that path there, because that is an old railway. The railway used to run along there, um, and then they, that bit of track closed and they extended it. So we're just going through the crossovers. I know you can't, there you go, you can just see it behind me. Back through the woods. Um, for, for a railway that's not on a huge site, this has to be one of the most interesting and exciting miniature railways you know, I've ever been to. That, but that's what I love so much about miniature railways. They're all different. Some are a circuit around a park or through woodlands. Others are a rather complex track layout like this and you never quite know where you're gonna go next. Some of them, like this one, have semaphore signals and colour lights to control the, the ride, which is exciting. Um, sometimes they run along by little streams, like this one here. And there's the carriage shed. This is what I love, these, these um, X Great Western mainline colour lights they've got. There's another one here. We return through what was the original railway station. When it opened, the railway station was here in this area and it was extended round the corner. So what we're going to do, as soon as we get back to the station, I'm going to go off into Beckenscott, we're going to have a wander around the village. I'm not going to show you everything because I have done the whole village over a series of videos way before I came up with the miniature railway idea, but I'm just going to, you know, let, let you see what's changed. So here we are, we're now back at the station, so it's time for me to go off into Beckenscott Model Village. Well, I've had a really enjoyable trip on the Beckenscott Light Railway. Um, there's their tram, I do really like that vehicle. We're going to go and have a wander around the village now. Like I said, I want to just show you a few things that have changed since our last visit. So, this is Beckenscott has always been one of my favourite places. So, my kind of idea is that every 
you know, at least once a year, I'll come here, take you around the village, and just show you what's changed, really, since our last visit. I remember on our last visit, just over there, they built a little tin mine, so we had a look on that, so um, that's in the Miniature Railway Britain video. So what we're doing now, we're just going to have a bit of a wander around, um, see what's changed, and, uh, you know, show the village you. It's just starting to rain. I do, I've always liked Beckham Spot when it's raining. I don't know, it just has a more of a sort of a magical kind of atmosphere. Um, so here we have the the brush factory. Now this was new when we last came, but I believe a few more, there's been a few more additions. So I don't think that building there was there. Um, let me take you right down here. Um, so yeah, this is the brush factory. Go around here. Now before the brush factory, there was a Jerry Builders. They never finished a building. It was demolished to build a brush factory. But a Jerry Builders, well, they're back and they're building a new house. Whether they'll ever finish it, I don't know. But it's quite like it'll be a nice house if it is finished. I'd like to see it. So look, it's right by the railway line. And it's got a river behind it. So I'm not sure if there's a train due anytime soon, but no doubt we shall see some. So yeah, that would be a really nice house if it's ever finished. I just hope it's um, all all right and waterproof because it is being built by a Jerry Builders. They've got a bit of a reputation. And is that a train up in here? Yeah, there we go. Look, it's a good train. Passing a Jerry Builder. So yeah, I'd love to live in that house if I ever finish it, if I could shrink down, that is. So this is Beckenscott Town. Um, I'd, so I did a whole series of videos here where I showed you pretty much everything there was to see here in much more detail. So today we're really just walking through, having a little look at the trains. Here comes Brighton. This is the first locomotive built for Beckenscott, built in 1929. Or when I say, might not be the first, it's the oldest existing, was what I meant to say. Uh, let's go up here. Beckenscott Minster. Always enjoyed, you know, the, hearing the singing. Every time I go past there, the choir of Beckenscott Minster never fails to sing. There's another train just passing us. So we're heading now for Beckenscott Newtown because, as the name suggests, it's a new town. And um, when I did a video dedicated to Beckenscott Newtown, have a look at the link on the screen now, um, it was brand new. Since then, a few more new things have been added. So we're going to go and have a look at them. Just passing the harbour at Southport Fishing Village. So we go through here, and uh, there is the Beckenscott Newtown, Canton Road Tube Station. Beckenscott's on the tube map now, which I think is a nice thing. Up here, let's have a look. Here is the Cliff Railway. Now the Cliff Railway would have been here, but the station wasn't finished. Now it is a water power Cliff Railway. So like the Cliff Railway at Linton and Lynmouth, and I believe I've not been there, but there's one at the centre of alternative technology near Mahuntleff in Wales, it's powered by water. So you can hear the little water trickling so what will happen, when the carriage at the top, the tank below it fills up, it will come down and it will bring the other one back up with it. So um, we'll just hang around, see how long it takes for that to happen. Um, so you've seen the little passengers would have boarded through the side door there and uh, they'd have taken their trip up to the top of the hill. While we wait for that to happen, I will just show you, I've shown you some of this before, but I'll show you again. They've got the, um, the town hall. Now that is a model of the town hall in France. I believe the town's called Langer and it's twin with Beaconsfield in real life. Um, there we go, look. So we should see all the water come out. I don't know how well you can see that, but the water is coming out and it will flow off down into the lake somewhere. Church bells are ringing. And uh, the other thing I want to show you, come down here, we now have a ruined gatehouse, the remains of a gatehouse to Beckenscott Newtown. And then you have the church, there's the church above us. Now let's follow up here, because there's a, what I think is one of the coolest new buildings they've added since we last visited. Um, it is just around the corner, just here. This is Splashing. Great Western Rail Motor is just arriving at Splashing Station. And can you just see that over there? There goes the Splashing Tram. Uh, just there. He's going to go along the top 
of the of the cliffs along by the lake. Where is he? There you go. There. He's passing the caravans. So what I've come to show you. Well, I, I really, really like this new building. Here we have some 1920s Art Deco. This is a model of High and Over in Amersham. So the real house is in Amersham. Quite a lot of the buildings here are built on on real houses and real buildings around Great Britain. Well, actually, around the world, because the bridge over there is a model of Sydney Harbour Bridge, but this is high and over. So, like I said, the real one is in Amersham. Apparently, in the war, the real one had to be covered up because it looked like a giant direction sign pointing one way to London, one way to Birmingham, and the other way to Plymouth. So, yeah, there's, that's high and over. What I'm going to do now, take you up, up to the viewing tower, and um, we shall finish the video from up there. So we arrive up here and we get a really, really nice view over the whole of Beckenscott. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will be going to more miniature railways. We will be coming back here. My face is very silhouetted, but um, perhaps just enjoy the sight over Beckenscott instead. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Also do come and visit Beckenscott Model Village. It's only a five minute walk from the railway station in Beaconsfield. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.